What up? It's your boy Josh, aka Donkey Teeth, aka DeGlester Hard Duncan Chud, aka Dan Smith, BYU. And it's that time again. Time to take two iconic snacks, smash them together, and see if they create a beautiful snack baby. Now we asked you which two snacks you want to see us smash together, and you said cheddar sour cream ruffles and Snickers. Will this new snack be a smash? Find out, because this is Snack Smash. We got cheddar and sour cream ruffles, and we got Snickers. What in tarnation are we gonna do to this? Obviously, we gotta make some sort of seasoning powder because Snickers are divided into three layers, right? So we got essentially three components here, right? You got the peanut and the caramel layer, you got the nougat layer, and then you have the chocolate nougat? cutting. So nougat is a French candy. It's essentially like back in the old timey days where they didn't have the technology to make good candy, so everyone was like, well, let's put sugar and eggs together and figure it out. I think we can take actual potato pulp from the ruffles and infuse that into the nougat. Are you telling me chips are made out of potatoes? Potato chips are indeed made out of potatoes. Great. You learn something new every day. He's learning. So we're gonna infuse a bunch of actual potato chips into the nougat, then we're gonna take our cheddar and sour cream powder, mix that into the caramel, and then I think we can probably do the same thing with a white chocolate glaze to finish. Another white chocolate glaze? Another white chocolate glaze. <laughs> Come on, Nicole, all candies are the same. It's You're just right. sugar covered in chocolate. Do you guys feel prepared? Do you guys feel that I have given you the tools you need to succeed? Not really. All right, yeah. and break. We gotta make the cheddar and sour cream seasoning for the cheddar and sour cream ruffles. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take some blue cheese and I'm just gonna lay it out here in an even layer and I'm gonna get this in the dehydrator. I'm spreading a thin layer of sour cream on a silicone mat and I'm dehydrating that as well. We're great, all right, I'm gonna pop this in the dehydrator. My hands are slippery from the cream. I don't think the manufacturer of the dehydrator would think of a lot of the things that we've put in it. The penises of seven animals. It's a, a true Noah's Ark of animal penises have been in that dehydrator. I think sour cream is frankly the least of his worries. So we got some sour cream and some blue cheese that's already been dehydrated. You see this got all nice and brown. It's gonna concentrate all that blue cheese flavor. That's straight mold. Arr! It's just like, you know, that sweet little siren song of just like, you're eating mold. All right, so we're gonna start with a hefty base of salt in there. That's always gonna be the first ingredient on these chips and is the reason my pee is the color that it is. I have a sneaking suspicion it's the energy drinks, but often there is a green tinge to it. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a lot of dehydrated cheddar cheese powder, because that's gonna be your dominant flavor in there. And you're working in ratios, you're using your instincts, you've trained your whole life for this moment. Butt milk, not a sponsor. Once you're in the pockets of big butt milk, there's no coming back. So we're gonna put buttermilk powder in there. I'm taking the dehydrated sour cream and the blue cheese, and I'm adding that to the spice grinder with salt, cornstarch, onion powder, a skosh, garlic powder, a little bit of garlic powder, maltodextrin, and hit him with the old maltodextrin razzle dazzle. MSG. You're just gonna do a tiny little pinch. Just buzzing it up till it's a nice uniform consistency. Don't do this. The smoothnistas at Jamba Juice always rock the smoothie making blenders, and so I assume it's doing something. A raspberry razzmatazz is always <laughs> perfectly blended. Okay, I think we're good to go. Now we gotta make that whatever the next step is. Okay, action? Yeah. Yeah, Ben said yeah. So today I made the caramel that's going inside of our Snickers bar. And if you know anything about making stuff with sugar is that it's fun. So we're gonna start with a quarter cup of water. I'm taking sugar, water, and corn syrup. Somehow a hole ended up in the bottom, and that saves time of me opening the top. And I'm heating that up in a pan to 315 degrees until it's nice and bubbly and amber brown. Dump a little bit of butter in here. I believe that's four tablespoons. And then this is heavy cream, which I will now measure. Whoa, nine tenths of a cup. I'm gonna let that get melting. In the event that you want your butter to melt, you should probably turn the burner on, which I will do now. So sugar work, especially caramel, is very finicky, and whenever you're heating up sugar in a pan, you wanna touch it as little as possible. You don't wanna be stirring it constantly with a spatula. There's peanuts. I'm gonna put some in the caramel. Trevor gets peanuts a little as a treat when he's a good boy. Got this cheese powder here also that I'm gonna be adding to the caramel. I'm a big fan of the cheddar and sour cream ruffles. I think it's a great chip, and I've eaten a lot of them. He nailed the flavor. Great job, Josh. Ooh, getting some bubbles. That's exciting. This gun is cool, and it measures the temperature of things. The thermogun doesn't make any sound other than the clicking of the trigger, but I like to think of it as a phaser. I play the phaser sound in my head from Star Trek. We are in the 300s, baby. This is the part when it starts to ramp up, and you look at it one second, and it's 300, and then you look at it a second and a half later, and it's at 315, so I'm just gonna keep a steady eye. Oh, 312, 320, there it goes! Okay, off the heat, and then whisk in the right hand. It's gonna get steamy! 
This is going so much better than I thought it would. Oh, it's perfect. Very important step is the cheese powder because what's a cheesy caramel without cheese? And so you're just gonna dump it all in. And whisk it. So we're gonna let this cool off a little bit and then we're gonna lay it on top of the nougat and after it cools off, it's gonna get that nice chewy soft caramel texture. That's also when I'm gonna add the peanuts because I want them to suspend in nice layers and not all just sink to the bottom. I'm gonna attempt to make a glaze again. I know what happened last time, I really fudged it up. Why is this seizing? This isn't a part of the plan. Like literally, I made fudge. So I'm really excited because I finally bought the good stuff, Bakel's white, coating chocolate and it has a bunch of stuff in it already. They have soy lecithin, they have milk powder. I'm gonna dump, that much is good. I'm just gonna let it melt up a little bit. But this time I'm gonna take my time and really make sure every single part of this glaze comes out perfectly. Wow, this is like amazing stuff. Look how thin it is already and I don't need to add any Crisco brand coconut oil, fantastic. I'm coloring it with a combination of actual cheese powder that Josh makes and food coloring. If there's any time for uh, the white chocolate to seize, it's now. I was working at a chocolate shop a few years ago. I'd just be sleeping and I would just have like nightmares like that, thinking of my chocolate seizing in the middle of a very intense project. So everyone cross your fingers, cross your toes. I really want this to be perfect and delicious. Cool. I'm trying to mimic the chip exactly. And um, if memory serves me well, it's like this really pretty like light dusting of cheese where you can still see the potato, you know, creep through. I want it to be more of like a whisper of cheese instead of like a sock in the face of cheese, you know? A whisper of cheese sounds like this. Hey, hey, there's cheese in this. So I think this is a beautiful color. I'm gonna keep whisking it away to get all of the lumps out. It felt amazing to succeed in something that I screwed up once before. Guys, I made a glaze without any sort of problem happening. Woo! You guys can't see it, but everyone's hands are like, woo, they're very excited for me. I'm making nougat over here! All right, sorry, those were on a tight deadline. This is all gonna start with some sort of boiling sugar syrup, because that's the only technology that they had back in the day when nougat was invented. That was back in the era where every soda had cocaine in it and was meant to treat, like, some disease. And then in comes corn syrup. We'll call it a cup and a half. Just Turns out one of these things is just a cup and a half, so that's cool. So now we're just gonna stir this together. It's on medium high heat right now. I lied, the burner's cranked all the way up. I said what you should be doing, that burner is all the way up. Now what we need to do is get our egg whites whipping. Egg whites, what do they do? How do they work? No one knows, but they do have protein in them and when you whip them up, they're going to froth and then you're gonna have some more structure to your nougat. So it's kind of the same theory behind a meringue, but we're just uh, changing up the ratios by doing a lot more sugar. You're looking for stiff peaks. You want me to describe a stiff peak now, don't you? I couldn't get into stiff peaks. Thought it was weird for the sake of weird. That's well, come to the fire welcome. Does anyone get that? Thanks. It's not a great joke. Stiff peak is when you're able to stick a spoon into a meringue or something like whipping marshmallow or cream, and the peak does not fall down. Soft peak is when you get a little depression in your peak. Uh, but a stiff peak is when I'm just happy to see you. So you can see they're sticking to the spoon. That's a good thing. You got nice soft peaks, but if you over whip them, they can get crumbly. So it looks like this is about ready to go. Take about a quarter of this mixture and we're gonna stream it into this while it's going real fast and hot. I'm streaming in about a quarter of that liquid into the beaten egg whites, and then I'm letting that continue to heat to 315 degrees. We're gonna put less of thin in there because it's in emulsifier. That means it's also going to add some leavening to it because we want this to have almost a kind of marshmallowy consistency. We could have used gelatin, but Snickers ain't got no gelatin on the ingredient label, but they got a lot of lecithin. I'm crushing up the Ruffles chips and I'm adding that to the mixture that's in the stand mixer. So the potato chips are actually gonna dissolve from the heat and the moisture of the sugar syrup. And now we're gonna go ahead and pour this slowly in there. I'm streaming in the liquid that's reached 315 degrees. Now we're gonna let this whip up for about six minutes to whenever it you think you should stop and then just buy a Snickers, which was 20 minutes ago to be clear. And then I'm pouring that mixture out on a sheet pan to let it set in the fridge until it's nice and nougaty. All right, guys, we gotta work fast. We got the caramel at perfect chewy consistency. I'm gonna put the nuts in. Trevor, I'm your nut guy. <laughs> I've been your nut guy since day one. Nope, you're not my nut guy. Okay. I'm nut guy already. You are no. not his nut guy. He and I should hang out. Uh, whisk it. So it's, we gotta mount <laughs> whisk it. it. Uh, whisk with the spoon. A few more, maybe. 
All right, Nicole's yeah. my nut girl. Okay, what? okay so no. it's, we got to moon it on the nougat. Okay. Moon it. Moon, you dump it out and I'll mash. Okay. Nicole, get the Pam. Help! Could we have made this in a chocolate bar mold? No. <laughs> Stupid idiot. Give so me what your we're hands. Gonna do, the idea is we're going to lay it out in a full sheet. So we have the nougat, we have the caramel. This is still a little bit warm. That's why it's pliable. And then we're simply going to cut it with our dough cutter in the exact shape of a Snickers. And then we are going to glaze it in our chocolate. Dunk it. Look at that. You can use the heat of your hand. And assuming you've lubed up enough, which I hope you have, then it's just going to create a Always nice sheen on top. Uh, is so it going to be like one big bar? No. So we're actually using the king size Snickers or the share size. Because here's the thing. Snickers used to be real big, right? And then they got a lot smaller due to new dietary restrictions. We're making king size. So we got enough to make at least three or four based on producerial direction. This has a big two because there's two separate bars in here, which is the stupidest thing ever. Stupid! I don't We're have... making one long bar. I don't want to share with anyone. I don't have any friends to share Snickers with. I want one big bar to eat by myself one in my car. Bar. One long bar. One long... Got floppy. All right. I'm going to put this in the fridge. They're sticky. Why is this my job? All right, so this is set in the fridge. You see the caramel's oxidized a little bit, which is really great. This is looking like a snake. No, don't lube me up for the cutting. <laughs> yeah. You'll thank me later. Thank you. That's a good call, Nicole. Trevor, can you hold the Snickers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Press it against my sides. Okay, pressing it. Come on, strong man. So this is coming out of the fridge, so it is extra cold. That's why it's so hard to cut right now. Is that what a fridge does? Yes. <laughs> we tried putting in a hot fridge, but it didn't work. <laughs> I want my Dr. Peppers to be hot in the morning. <laughs> I drink Dr. Pepper in the morning. It's a breakfast soda. Woo look at that layer. Okay, okay. That uh, looks great. No, switch. Yep, yep. No, get up on the counter. <laughs> gotta rock it. Get in there. Yep. Gotta rock it. If you gotta get all the way on the counter, do that. Can't have tight hips when you're making Snickers. Do what you gotta do. Josh, you're I'm just up. gonna. Get in there. Stop. You gotta want it. It's up. You gotta want One it. One more cut. Some might think, boy, how's your teeth gonna get through that if all your body weight on a sharp tool can't? Find out, because this is Snack Smash. Oh my god. Trevor, just hold the dang Snickers. I'm holding the Snickers. I've been holding the Snickers. All right, I'm gonna, all right, I'm gonna dismount. Wait, this is so ugly. Ah, you get all coyote ugly on the counter then. So now we gotta. Look at that. That's oh, a that's Snickers bar. That's pretty epic. That's kind of actually a Snickers bar. And now all we gotta do is glaze it in chocolate and then. It's even got the peanuts. Everyone pray. Oh, oh my God. She just put it Everyone right. Pray. She just went for it. With her freaking hands, man. I hope the sour cream and cheddar Snickers tastes like that kind of salty, savory chocolate covered pretzel situation, but with like a little bit of that blue cheese funk, because to me, blue cheese can go sweet really well. I actually have really high hopes for this. All we gotta do is dip this again, then we're gonna get it in the fridge to set up, and then we gotta put it into our Snickers packaging. Hey, speaking of the packaging, I know what you're wondering. What is it? Let's find out. Look at this. This is insane. Look at Coolest that. Coolest freaking thing I've seen in my life. I'm really excited to eat this. My hands are all the Pam. I've been greased up since pam. day one. <laughs> wow. Oh. Hey guys, why wait? Let's eat it. Because that was Snickers' slogan. Touch it still tips. might be. Touch your tips. Touch tips. Oh, this can't become okay. a recurring thing. Okay. Mmm. It chews like a Snickers. It's like we made a Snickers. This is not a Snickers. What do you mean? What? It's like really sour creamy. Mm -hmm. Are you guys tasting the sour cream? It is just enough. <laughs> What's coming through for me is the blue cheese. I mean, notice how excitedly I said that because I love it. Sure, it tastes like sour cream and blue cheese. I don't think people are gonna be lining up to necessarily buy these, but that's why we got a vote. We have our official snack smash smash or pass snacking paddle snacks. Are you ready to do this? So we're gonna do a three, two, one vote to whether we think this snack smashes or this snack pass, if we are passing on this snacking. Snack. You guys ready? Yes. Nice. All right. Three, two, one. Smash! Smash! No, Nicole, no! come on! That was a resounding pass, guys. I'm sorry. No that way. sour cream was weird. That blue cheese was weird. That onion was weird. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna allow myself to enjoy that. Sorry. I think weird is good. I, I like it. weird. I lean into weird. We're weird guys. Yeah. Be weird together. Yeah. Let's. Well, oh no, God, oh. that's not what was happening. <laughs> oh. And thank you guys for watching this season of Snack Smash. We got recipe videos coming out every week. Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing. We'll see y'all next time. Make your kitchen more mythical with these stickers and magnets. Now available on mythical.com.